So it is race week and in this video we're going to dive into what I've been up to leading into the race and my thoughts and feelings ahead of the big world championship race. Pretty much a week and a half out from the big race or a race like this, I will quite drastically reduce my training volume. So it was about 10 days out from the race that I did my last big ride to run session and then about eight days out that I did my last long run leading into the race. So we ticked those two final big boxes, just more of a confidence thing rather than anything else. And then the last week, my training volume probably comes down by almost half of my kind of typical training when I'm in a big heavy block. So the, the volume comes right down, but the intensity goes up. So I want to try and sharpen up whilst feeling fresh. I think if you do too little and just sit around, then it's really easy to start feeling lethargic, especially in this kind of climate in Hawaii where it's so hot and humid. If you just sat about, then you do just start to feel really sleepy and tired. So we don't do nothing, but the volume comes down a huge amount. so excited for this trip one thing being that there's obviously a new bike that I'm riding we had the amazing camo bike which got a lot of attention I absolutely loved it however this was really just to get some attention it was based around when you see like the new cars that are being tested we were going for that kind of theme which I think was so cool of Cube to come up with loved riding that camo print bike however I finally got to meet my race bike in the last few days which I had already spoke with Cube about what I would love it to look like but I saw it for the first time in the flesh a couple of days ago and it really is like a dream bike Cube have certainly delivered with this one look at that, it's so good just looking yours. at it, it looks fast. Yeah. Don't drop it. It's scary. Yeah. You could almost actually oh stay. Oh my god, he's full comfy. Oh my god. <laughs> This is, this is, we call him Papa Bear, because he, <laughs> he's, our, he's our massage therapist, but he's also our chef when we're away, and he's our domestic goddess, ironing all of our stuff. Papa Bear. Hi everybody. <laughs> it for its first ride it felt super smooth super fast the pink power was out because the legs felt good as well so I'm really excited to be racing on this bike it is a prototype bike but nonetheless it is feeling super fast and I'm excited to give it its first race Oh, 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 oh,
keep the intensity quite high in the pool because that's where my background is, so I'm able to do that and not feel too fatigued. Whereas on the run, I don't like to do too much intensity. If I'm gonna do any, it's actually more around just seeing what race pace feels like in this environment and not doing it for too long at a time because it doesn't want to feel too hard. You want it to actually feel like, yeah, this feels reasonable. I can do this for the marathon. So it's more of like a mental check. In terms of on the bike, we did a 20 minute effort the other day just to check that that race kind of power is where we want it in the correct lactate value, which it was, which was really good. And then again, we do some shorter intervals on the bike. Maybe five minutes would be the longest when we're looking on race week, all the way down to like 30 seconds to a minute, which are just sharpener intervals just to get the body firing. And so your body remembers something is about to happen. It's not like it's like, oh, we're on off season, we're chilling. It's just reminding the body that actually you're gonna need to be firing on all cylinders pretty soon. Yeah, you can do that, but don't go crazy high cadence. Just do, just do it like. If you feel good, you can do it three times five minutes. Race pace. Should we do the last lap take? <laughs> <laughs> what, five minute effort at yeah. race pace? Yeah, let's do that. Just like check that out. Yeah. Many times they taught me lows are what makes you feel so good. Oh, yeah, and then the big laughs. And then the Okay. <laughs> I got a million reasons to keep holding on. Yeah, I got all that it takes to win and overcome. What I got is just a feeling, but it's so so strong. It goes on, on and on, on and on. There's something going on inside of me. I feel it growing stronger every beat. I never just believe in what I see. Cause I can feel the energy, energy, the energy. I can feel it, I can feel it. Cause I can feel the energy, energy. I think heart rate would actually be a bit higher in here. It's way hotter in here than that, so. Okay, that was more like 2.35, 2.30. So, so yes, yeah, 2.20. Yeah, we've got a one more test trip. We'll do the next one, 2.20. Okay, yeah. Don't go by 2.20. Like, like, yeah, we're definitely above. The last strip there. Precious. One strip left. It's better. Really fine night. Mm. Well, that felt way easier. So. Ten watts less. Ten watts. That's really good. It's just the lowest you've had it on that one. Well. Yeah, if I can hold it, that latte, I'm fine. The 220 is where it's at. Yeah, that literally is Barbie's bike. <laughs> if Barbie was riding a bike, this would be it. <laughs> the lead in to this race a bit of a media circus obviously it is the biggest race on the triathlon calendar particularly in the long distance world so all of our sponsors are just trying to maximize the exposure of the brands working with the athletes and we kind of we completely understand that as athletes however this is the biggest race of the year so managing the schedule of those commitments around our final training sessions is really about balance and i'm really lucky that i have a team that can help me do that i obviously have holly behind the camera who can help me tick off a lot of those media commitments but it is all part of the job of being a pro athlete so i try and embrace it as much as possible Alongside that, obviously, training, meeting the fans who are also training or ready to watch the race. Trying to fit all of that in around the training isn't always easy, but I do try and do it with a smile on my face. Obviously, sometimes I'm deep in the middle of a session, so it's difficult for me to take photos or try and do an interview, but 
yeah, we get done what we can and it's been great to be here with my amazing sponsors and just meeting everyone here who's excited for the race to happen as it hasn't happened for three years. And then on a three, two, one look here, game face. Okay, here we go. And three, two, one. Time for safety. Hashtag model life. <laughs> <laughs> that was like car sale commercial. This is where you warm up on race point. <laughs> Mangrove. Banyan, it is a banyan tree. Although, I wouldn't get too far in there. Uh, yeah. You don't know what might live in there. Can I could have just fall down on me when it's I was. It's far enough. at the swim star at Digby Beach which is actually pretty small when you look at it. I think that is one of the main things when people come here for the first time they expect this big beach start but actually it's a tiny little corner off the side of the pier here. Are you I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Shark watch, <laughs> dolphin yeah. watch. Yeah, we got two girls. If yeah. I see anything, I'll be in the kayak. <laughs> no this point we are so close to the race now so it is just about taking that time to chill and unwind between your final sessions just trying to switch off not let the nerves take over too much so I just normally watch something on Netflix it's just something to take my mind away from all of the hype I obviously do spend the time going through my nutrition strategy, writing that down, where I want bottles, when I'm gonna take what during the race, get all of that dialed and in my mind, but then also take the time to completely switch the brain off from triathlon and just let the mind and body recover. I think my top tips leading into an Ironman race are when you're like two weeks out from the race, you cannot gain any more fitness. The work is done. It is about just sharpening up. Like you can do too much. It's about getting on the start line fit and healthy and if anything a little bit undercooked rather than being there absolutely exhausted. So definitely just take that time to unwind and rest. And obviously if you're in Hawaii preparing for this race, it's really, really hard to not get sucked into all the hype and all the excitement. And definitely, I think as a age group athlete, you should definitely enjoy that. It is like a once in a lifetime race. But at the same time, I try and take myself away from it the closer I get to the race so I can just unwind, recover and get ready kind of in my own headspace. So I'm definitely feeling ready for the race. I feel like I've done everything that I can to be here in the best possible shape. I've had an amazing team work with me all year to come back from this injury. It feels like a blessing just to be here. 
but at the same time I do feel ready I, I feel like I've done the work and we've got a race strategy a race plan which is really rough because anything can happen in the race but I think some of my best ever races I've just worried about myself I've just focused on my race what I'm doing and then the outcome has always been good and I think it's potentially easier to do that over the longer distance because you do need to manage yourself. I guess it's like a puzzle, it's like a challenge, like you need to make sure, right, I'm having that piece of energy at this time, I'm taking caffeine at this time, like you need to have your own plan and actually not really worry about anyone else. It is slightly different in the profile because obviously we are racing for prize money, we're racing for accolades and I definitely want to be on that podium again. So you do have to, to some extent, be concerned about what your competitors are doing. But I think my strategy is just going to be to focus on myself, do what I do and just see what result comes from that. We've definitely got the nutrition dialed. I feel like we've practiced that more than ever. I'm more confident in my fueling strategy than ever before. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed that everything goes well. And if it does, I think I will have a great day and the result will just be a bonus because I do feel like I've won just getting to the start line this time. So for breakfast- That's negotiate the price. For yeah. breakfast, I eat rice. And then for lunch, I eat rice. For dinner, I eat rice. Sometimes I add chicken and a rice cake. <laughs> I had to negotiate the price with the woman. Because it was like a 28 pound platter. Oh, right, yeah. And, and it came with rice. And I was yeah. like, I just want rice. Yeah. She's like, oh, well, we don't do that. I was like, can we not? Like, well, there's four or five different items on there. Can we just like negotiate the price? Yeah. And she's like, what for rice? I was like, well, yeah, so I just need rice. She said, okay, $6. I was like, mm, five? She's like, okay. <laughs> Has anyone been so happy to get rice? So you might have noticed I'm wearing our new Team Charles Barclay Kona Edition t-shirt. Um, these are available online to buy. We'll put a link in the description below. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for the post-race video. Two one. Two one. Two one. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Does that make sense to anyone but me and Reese? <laughs>